Hey guys, welcome back to Am Sam Fam. Thanks so much for coming with us again today. We've got a special video for you today that we are so excited to be finally bringing because this is one of the biggest questions we get asked all the time. That question is housing. What's the cost of housing here in American Samoa? How to find housing here in American Samoa? Rent versus buy. And so we are going to take this chance today to answer these questions for you. But before we jump into it, guys, we just want to remind you, if you are not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing to our channel because we love to do these sorts of videos and we talk a lot about things about the island, life on the island, how much things cost, uh, just how to kind of navigate day-to-day -day life moving to an island like American Samoa. And we would love it if you joined us on all of these adventures and, and all of these videos where we talk about cost of living. Also, please, if you like the video, leave a like below and give us a comment. Let us know what you think too. It helps direct our future videos. So I think the easiest question to answer is buying versus renting. People ask us all the time for ourselves why we don't just buy a house here and people who are looking to come here ask if they can buy a house here and that answer for ourselves is really easy. So the law here back when they signed the treaty in 1900 which made these islands a territory of the U.S. part of the treaty was that to own land here in American Samoa you have to be at least 50% Samoan. We're not. <laughs> We're not even 0.5% solid. Oh, I know, I wish. Yeah. Now there is the option to basically take out a really long-term lease on some land, like a 50-year lease, and you can build a house on the land and live in it for 50 years. But you know, that that's a great option for some people. It just didn't really strike us as, as fitting our lifestyle and didn't fit sort of maybe our, our neuroses about the thought of like, kind of really just having a long-term temporary uh, ownership stake in a house. So we didn't want to go that route, but that is an option for some people. It's complicated indeed to do that. And so we won't go into that part. If you're interested in that, um, you could get a hold of the American Samoa Affairs, Samoan Affairs, and they could help you out more with that. So the other option is renting. And we rented for the first four years that we lived here. We had good experiences. I guess we should just note real quickly in case you are just joining us for the first time and you're wondering why only the first four years. Uh -huh. So we now live on a sailboat here in the harbor in Pongo Pongo and we own our sailboat. So it's kind of like our little way of owning our own home now. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we're not renting anymore. So that second question we're going to talk about is how to find a rental. That is a way more complicated answer than it probably seems like it should be because you've watched our video on the cost of living for like transportation. We talked about this with cars. There's no Craigslist. Uh, Zillow isn't something that you can find here. There's no rent.com that covers this here. There's no place to go out and just kind of find a listing of all the places that are available for rent. And so you end up having to kind of do it in your own way. And everybody that we know um, that isn't from here that's found housing has sort of done it in their own way. And it's, such a variety that there's no great single answer so what we decided to do is to talk to some of these people that we know some of our friends and some of the people we've run into along the way and ask them how they got into the house that they're in and we'll even share our own story too now that is part of what took us so long to get this video out we've been working on this video for over a year now but people have been a little bit resistant to share their stories. Everybody says, yeah, that's a great idea for a video. And we say, oh, great, would you like to share your story? And most people decline. And <laughs> and there, there are good reasons for that too. People are either here working for the American Samoan government, and so they feel uncomfortable sharing their story of how they were able to get housing on their like through their contract. And there are also the people who are here as Samoans, as local residents here, who live on communal or family land. And because it's communal land, the ownership is a little bit different. And so those people understandably felt uncomfortable talking about owning or the home or the land that they were living on. And then a lot of people, again, understandably, just didn't 
want to talk about their home and especially didn't want us to shoot any footage of their home because it's a really private place. <laughs> you know, it's your own mess and everybody's embarrassed about their own mess and we get that. So yeah. we kind of had to wait long enough to find a few people that were just uh, out there enough like us that they were willing to share their lives on the internet. But that being said, let's jump in to these stories that we do have to share. So our first story comes from our friend Lisa May, who is Samoan, and she is from here. She has family land here, and they were able to get into a family home, the home that she grew up in, and do some renovations and actually turn it into an Airbnb that they rent out. So that's another question we get asked a lot is people coming here like what kind of accommodations there are on the island. Then our second story is with our friend Christian and he and his wife came here on a government contract with American Samoan government and were able to get into some of the government provided housing that was provided through their contract similar to what we did when we came. And then we'll finish up by sharing our own experiences. Hi, I'm Lisa. We live up in Alawal. Our father uh, bought this land back in the 70s, but because he bought this land, um, it's not a communal land anymore. It's freehold. We didn't really finish this house when we built it, um, but we were trying to build it for 11 children because that's how many of us were here. Um, but my dad felt like he needed to move up to the States because of his health. But then we moved back here to take care of the house and then um, started the project a few years after that. We only fixed up the house according to what our income would allow us to. We didn't take out any loans. Our father was adamant about that. And um, so most of the material that we have here in this house is from here. I mean, we bought a lot of it from Ace, some of it from CBT. We did order a few things online from Amazon. They were more expensive if we bought it here than if we just bought it up on Amazon. Initially, this side of the house had no plumbing at all. I mean, this was our living room for the, the whole house. And so we um, made this into its own unit and we brought in plumbing and electricity and everything that we needed for a, the comforts of a home. We also have hot water and a washer dryer that's convenient it's right down the hall so you don't have to go outside. We have three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The master bedroom has its own bathroom and then a little bathroom for the other two bedrooms. And a lot of windows because we love light and uh, we just wanted to make it feel like you're still outside but you're inside. <laughs> it's kind of like a tree house but not a tree house. A tree house with uh, all the amenities of a normal house. <laughs> we do have AC in the main living area which covers the living room and the kitchen. Uh, we also have AC in the master bedroom. We do have ceiling fans in all the rooms though and so that helps circulate the air and like I mentioned before there's windows in every room so the air up here in Alawa is pretty cool. All you have to do is open the windows and turn on the fan and it'll feel like you've got AC going on. But maybe on the hot, hot days, you might want the AC a little bit. Uh, but we do have an amazing view outside and I think that probably sells the house more than anything else so that you can just relax out there and feel the breeze. After we finished the project, we weren't sure if we were gonna uh, rent it out from month to month or live in it or we just came up with an idea of uh, renting it out through Airbnb that way um, other people can enjoy what we enjoy here. Um, whether you're on island or off island um, you, uh, you have a place to come to that's fully furnished and has all the amenities of a normal mainland home sort of, except for with an island flair of the view and the breeze and 
and all the beautiful island sounds like birds and things like that. It's just, I can't explain it, you just have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> We have told you guys before that there is an awesome Facebook group called American Samoa Deals and Steals. <laughs> and Lisa here is the one who created that and keeps it going and keeps everything in order. And it is by far the best resource that we have found here. You can find a lot of things on American Samoa Deals and Steals um, from yard sales to earrings to land to buy or even houses to rent. So people can post things that they're selling, but people can also post things that they're looking for. Yeah. I know that's what we've used sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely been a helpful resource for us personally, um, as well as so many people on the island and a lot of people off the island too yeah. that are, are looking for things before they even come here or looking for things for their families that are here and they're not. Oh. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for providing yeah. that resource for the island. And thank you. Like you said, I, I hadn't even considered that it could be helpful for people off island oh, yeah. to find things for their family too. Yeah, so that's awesome. Christian. So, hey Christian, thanks for coming and helping us out today. <laughs> Hi. So, um, where are we right now? Uh, we are in a government housing at Freddy's Beach. Here in this one house, uh, there are two apartments and we are here on the first floor. Or the upper floor. Sure, yeah. In America, we would call it the second floor, but that's okay. <laughs> second floor. <laughs> I'm came here with my wife Lillian, she's working for the government and for ASG, for for ASG. The yeah I'm trying to hear my luck as a photographer would you agree that? <laughs> yeah. thank you and um, so we mostly informed ourselves before coming here by looking at uh, your videos <laughs> awesome. and I uh, didn't know a ton about American Samoa. It was a relatively spontaneous decision. But yeah, we wanted to try something else. Um, so kind of wanted to escape COVID, uh, wanted to spend lots of time outside nature, kind of were ready to plunge into a whole different adventure. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Housing was pro is provided uh, for government employees. So we were kind of happy to have something yeah. And we thought, yeah, let's take it from there. So when you came, you guys came during COVID, so you had to be in the quarantine. But yeah. as soon as you were out of quarantine, this was ready for you. Like, yeah, yeah. You just moved right in. Exactly, yeah. That's nice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are coming on a government contract, a local government contract, there's a good chance you'll be able to get into some government housing too. So that was the same for us. We were able to get in mm -hmm. to one of these apartments too, which was convenient. It was nice. Yeah. So this couch was here. It, how much did it have and what else did you guys feel like you needed to kind of complete it? All the furniture here was there before. So we didn't um, provide any of the furniture and given the size of the apartment, because uh, for a couple, the apartments are not really big. Probably like for you as a family, it was bigger. Yeah. Uh, like uh, there are some apartments here which have two floors and which are considerably bigger as well. Like how many bedrooms are in this apartment? Two. Two bedrooms? Yes. One bath? Yes. Okay. You've got a little kitchen? Yes. There's uh, an oven, a, a fridge, a freezer, water heater. Okay. There is no washer and there is no dryer. This apartment is not really built for washing the dryer. So even if you wanted to have one, you couldn't install it here. Go to a laundromat for, for the laundry. Yeah. But there are plenty available on the island. And yeah, yeah, lots yeah. of laundromats. Yeah. So I know in, just for reference point, in our apartment, we had the bigger two-story one for our uh -huh. family. 
and there was a washer hookup. Uh -huh. And so we did, we went and bought a washer. And so we did have the washer, but there was no dryer hookup. So uh -huh. if you're coming to Freddie's Beach, just that's what you can expect. <laughs> Savior on a government contract is cheap. Mm -hmm. That's how it was for us, yeah. yeah. Nate was getting paid every two weeks and every pay period we paid 50 bucks yeah. for the housing. So. Yeah, that's without utilities, um, electricity 150, um, and uh, internet probably 80, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are right on the ocean. Not right on the ocean. We can see the ocean. Yes. Oh, I know it might be hard to see the ocean, but you can hear it and okay. um, yeah, it does get pretty warm though. So would you guys run, I see an AC unit, would you run the AC or did you use fans? We ran one on a low level, yeah. There are two AC units, one here and the other one in the bedroom. The one in the bedroom is not, I know, is barely working. And this is not very efficient. On the ground here, we've got a pool here. Yes, that's one of the nicest features of of the whole compound, yeah. um, and which is a rarity, I think, on the island. And it's also like very close to the ocean. So what we often do is like um, we walk to uh, the resort, which is nearby, Mario Mai, mm -hmm. and then went past that along uh, the cliffs which is a fairly impressive with the blowholes. And if you go a bit further, um, there's a nice place to dip into the water at Airport Beach. So that's been like a uh, thing we really appreciate. Around the house, there are no dogs. Or, I mean, there's one very nice dog around here, which can make in, uh, walking around uh, the house a bit, uh, quite, I know, in some places, a bit more challenging. Yeah. It's very quiet, which is also nice, although it's very close to the airport. But as of now, we have probably three flights a week or something like yeah. that. So that's not yeah, really... Yeah, very limited flights yeah. right now. Yeah, when we first moved in, the commercial flights would leave about midnight. Oh. And like the whole apartment <laughs> would shake. And But yeah, about a week into it, we just sleep right through it and it doesn't yeah. bother us anymore. Wow. But, I mean, it is very close to the airport. The, the other thing which is nice, if you want to like enjoy a nice dinner on the coast, that's a very nice restaurant there. Yeah, right at Malina. Or they can get a drink there. Yeah, so right there on the ocean. Mm. It's really beautiful here. All right. Well, Christian, hey, thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>
we had some friends who knew of a place that was open and so they let us know right away we went over there that same day we met with the landlords and let them know that we are very very interested and we were so lucky to be able to get into a house over there so that really is word of mouth is kind of the key here in american samoa get out and talk to people get connected with all the facebook groups that are like kind of marketplace groups here even if you're not religious go to some church services and become part of the community that way and just get to know people and you'll instantly become part of sort of a family here and it's really easy to start kind of tapping into the resources of the island when you do things like that we lived in two different houses there in coconut point so the first house we moved into is kind of like a duplex situation so the landlords actually lived in the front part of the house and we lived in the back part of the house. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom house and kind of a funky layout. <laughs> there was no hot water, no washer dryer, not even hookups. Did not have like a range or oven. And when we first moved in, it had a little teeny tiny fridge, which now that we're on the boat doesn't actually seem that small. Yeah. <laughs> But once we moved in, the landlords were awesome and got us a full-size fridge when we asked them about it. That house that we were living in was literally just steps from the ocean. Like we walk out the door and it was 10 steps and you were on the edge. We'd see the sun rise up over the ocean every morning. Proximity to the water is a major factor for us, and it was one of the things that justified us, you know, spending what money we spent on it. And actually, you'll laugh because it's ridiculous. Rent for us on that apartment was $600 a month, and it was not a fancy apartment. It was kind of an island style home, and that was okay. $600 a month to live that close to a beautiful tropical beach, like literally on the beach, yeah. seems like ridiculously low. Uh, but for us, you know, we had to kind of weigh it out, and that to us made it really worthwhile. I think it might be worth a little bit more now to live in that apartment because uh, just over the last couple of years the, the housing market has tightened up a little bit here and there's a lot of people looking for homes so it's probably worth more now but that was 600 bucks a month is what we paid for that at first and so after living in that apartment for about six months the friends that lived in the house next to us moved out owned by the same landlords and we moved into that house so we had our own little house at that point and we were fortunate enough to keep the same rent Although I know that when we moved out, that price went up significantly to about a thousand bucks a month, I believe, which is probably at least what it's worth. Now that place was a two bedroom, one bath, big bathroom, nice big shower again. But again, no hot water. It was quite a bit nicer than the other one. I wouldn't call it exactly an island style home because it was a little bit nicer than that. It had no oven or stove, which was interesting. So when we went in there, there was just a gas range and we had her get rid of it and we replaced it with an electrical range. It came partially furnished. That's an important yeah. thing to state. So it did have a bed and it came with tables and chairs and some things like that that made it so we didn't have to go out and buy every little thing, which was really great. And it did actually originally come with a couch. The couch was not wonderful. I don't want to just say bad things. It just wasn't <laughs> We weren't comfortable happy with it we were willing to spend the extra money so we went and bought our own couch they pulled their couch out and we put ours in there and then yeah. it was a really comfy nice place it was still just steps from the ocean we had our own little i mean it's really little but our own little beach and we were able to go out there the kids could play out there literally the a private beach yeah that was amazing the way the wind blew it blew right into our windows which kept things cool so much so that sometimes during like the colder <laughs> time of year we had at night have to close all the windows and still like be cold because there was such a cool breeze coming in off the water. So it didn't end up being a great, like a really big issue that we didn't have yeah. AC. And so that is our experience with renting here. Now there are so many different houses that you could choose from. Rent I've seen as low as like $400 a month, but I believe that's more um, inland and more again more of the island style home it's gonna be somewhere like in the jungle back in Tafuna where mm -hmm. it's you know it's gonna be a little bit more mosquito ridden and it might not be as big or as nice or but, breezy or <laughs> breezy but it's, it's very affordable and uh -huh. you're gonna be living in a nice safe place at least so yeah if that's in your budget range or that's all you can afford there are those options sometimes if you talk to the right people and get yep. connected yeah that's right and I've also seen houses that are for rent that are you know $1,500 and up from there yeah 
And a lot of those more expensive homes are usually up the mountain and they'll give you a, like a crazy good view. And they'll usually have a big, beautiful veranda and- And those homes you could definitely expect to have hot water, you know, washer dryer, AC, those kinds of amenities if that's what you're looking for too. And there's so many more <laughs> things that we could cover, but that kind of covers the basics, I feel like, right? As much as we can cover maybe with the limited amount of resources that there are to find homes on this island. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea of what you might be getting yourself into and gives you some, some strategies on how you might start looking for a home if you're going to be moving here. If you're looking at moving here, we've had people ask, what could I do for work to be able to come live in this place that I see you guys living in? And that actually leads us perfectly into letting you guys know about our sponsor for this video. That's right, we've got a sponsor for our video. And that is a company called Skillshare. And Skillshare is an online platform with tutorials for you to be able to learn new skills and tools that can help you whether you are starting, looking at starting a new business or if you're looking at being able to work online digitally. The most recent course that I had taken is the introduction to aerial videography and that is put on by Wild Rabbit Productions. We always get lots and lots of positive input when we include some drone footage and since getting our drone I've been so unsure about using it and so I end up usually not using it and so this has been such a great course for me. It's gotten me to take the drone out and they include some challenges for you to do. I've been having so much fun actually taking my drone out and really learning how to use it. It's been really useful for me. If you are on the island, Skillshare is such a valuable resource to us here because there's not that many resources to us here on the island and as a result sometimes people are lacking some of those really fundamental skills. Uh, I have personally struggled hiring people that have the right skills and I will direct people to Skillshare so they can go learn more about how to use Microsoft Office applications and how to get up to a professional level and build those skills to make themselves more marketable. So they can work not just with companies on the island, but they can put themselves out and work remotely for companies all over the world and bring money into American Samoa, which we love. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they've got a special offer for you guys, for our viewers. The first thousand of our subscribers Click the link in our description down below. We'll get one month free subscription. Now this is a subscription based platform. And so even after that one free month, it is less than $10 a month if you sign up for the annual subscription. And if you think about the skills that you will be gaining from this, you should very, very quickly be able to earn that money back. So if there's a skill you've been wanting to learn, go ahead and head on over to Skillshare. Again, the link is in the description below and go check it out for yourself. Sign up and get that one month free so you can get the skills you need. And who knows, maybe it will lead to something where you can come over to American Samoa and find a rental place for yourself too. Guys, thanks again for joining us in this video. We love having you with us. Subscribe, like, leave us a comment and tell us all about your experience finding a home in American Samoa, or let us know what questions you have that we might not have covered. We'll do the best we can to cover them. All right, we are going to sign out. This has been a long enough video already. <laughs> we'll let you guys go. We'll say, Tofa Soifua. Bye.